How can a God of love send anybody to hell? So within these first five seconds, we can understand what this video is going to be about. This is going to be the reason why God, who loves his children so much, will send his children to hell. Pretty self-explanatory, so let's get into the rest of the video. God does not send anyone to hell. You send yourself there. Well, in Romans 14, verse 10, it talks about why you shouldn't judge people, because in the end, you'll be judged by God. Of course, meaning when you die. So, if you're judged by God when you die, and he's the ultimate decider whether you go to heaven or hell, it's God's fault why you're being sent to hell. God has done everything he possibly can to keep you out of hell. Well, apparently not. Because if God is an all-powerful being, he could beam down evidence to show that he actually exists. And if he shows that like, he actually exists, he's avoiding people from going to hell. And that's what, sh that's what a God who would truly love his people would do. He would make sure that his people who he loves so much would avoid going to hell. So if I were the God of who was all-powerful, I would choose to show evidence people. But since God is all-powerful and doesn't do it, He's a douchebag. Let's back it up real quick. God blessed you with free will versus being a robot where he can just mind control you. I mean, let's think about it. Imagine with me if I had a wife. What if I mind controlled her to love me, to hug me, and forced her to go on dates with me? Would that be real love? Well, first off, if she's your wife and acts like she doesn't love you, then you should probably try and go to couples counseling and try and get that fixed, and if that doesn't work, you should get a divorce with her. But if you have to mind control your wife to love you, there's gonna be some issues here. And now I know he's talking about God with this, so I'm gonna go back to the God example. God may have given us free will, but if he truly loved us so much, he would make sure to leave some traces of himself behind that are irrefutable, so that the children that I uh, before I said that he loves so much don't burn for eternity. No, absolutely not. Thanks, Billy. Thanks for the answer. He made us that way, in his image, to be creators. How awesome is that? So God ultimately gives us the freedom of choice through free will to accept him or reject him. There's a quote from Matt Dillahunty that I think can explain this a lot. I'm going to paraphrase on the exact quote. But a caller called in talking about God and why he sends people to hell. And then Matt Dillahunty responded to the guy saying, If your kid slapped you across the face and doesn't love you, is it right to put him in the basement and torture him until he grows old? Is it? No, it's not. So if it's not okay in the real world, why is it okay with God? So yeah, God gives you the power to deny him and to accept the consequences. So with that said, when we choose through our free will to love God, it is real, genuine, and sincere love. Okay, I hear you, Becky. Let's bring it back to the topic of this video. Why is there a hell? Well, I'm glad you asked, Becky. The Bible tells us that God designed hell for Lucifer and his fallen angels. So through the Bible, we know that God prepared hell for Lucifer and his fallen angels that rebelled against them. And as such, the consequence of sin is hell. If somebody lied to me, if somebody killed someone I cared about, if somebody robbed a bank, if somebody killed a disabled person or an elderly person, and they somehow deserve eternal torture, which is worse than the crucifixion of Jesus and any crucifixion at all? I'm sorry, even though you killed my mother or killed somebody or lied to me or do something bad that I don't like, I wouldn't wish eternal torture on anybody. And your God is completely fucked up if he thinks that's okay to torture his own children that much. But he loves them. If you commit sin, you go to hell, just like Lucifer. However, there is some good news to all of this. Through Jesus Christ, a pardon is issued if you believe in him as your Lord and Savior and repent of your sins. So remember when I was saying that God did everything he possibly can to keep you out of hell? Well, this is the part where you want to pay attention. I don't think in any way possible 
that sending your son to come down to Earth to get killed is any good way of stopping him from going to hell. How about just give evidence that you exist and that Christianity is real, and that would suffice for anybody. So what I'm saying is, if you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, you're going to heaven. However, those that refuse God's offer of forgiveness will suffer the same destination of hell with Lucifer and the other fallen angels. Through the Bible, we know that God is kind and loving, but also holds true to righteousness and justice. In that quote, it said, God loved us so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross. But he doesn't love us enough to stop AIDS, cancer, herpes, and any STD out there. But in the next quote, he says, God is righteous, which means he's just, he's like a judge. But I don't see how cursing someone's name when they hurt themselves is any reason to be tortured for eternity. If I stub my toe and said, oh, Ray Comfort, Ray is not going to throw me in hell if I say his name like that. But God will, because I guess God's ego is as big as fucking Jupiter. The cost of sin is hell. Short and simple. However, I really want to get this point through your head. If you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, then forgiveness is yours. Ooh. No games, tricks, or manipulation. The how-to guide is given up front to you, man! If the option is obviously clear, then why are there 4,200 religions that are practiced in the world? If it's that clear, there'd be one religion. But there's not. But yo, seriously, God came to Earth, humbling himself as a human baby born in a manger, living a sinless life, and dying for you on that cross. Through this action, his death paid the full cost for all sin. Yep, that's why there's no evidence of him being the actual Son of God. But seriously, Jesus went through hell on Earth so that we don't have to, so that you don't have to. All it takes is to just believe in him and the gospel. You see, it's not God's wish for his creation to go to hell. <laughs> Salvation is receiving Jesus as your savior. What a gift, what a gift. Yeah, what a gift. If I ask Jesus to my heart as my Lord and savior, but my family doesn't, I get to be in heaven for eternity knowing that they're burning alive. Okay, real quickly, I have a question for Google. Why is it when I type in AIDS in Google, Hillary Clinton pops up? You said how you wanted. You said how you needed. Don't want you believe it. You take it or leave it.